the acceleration when we made the first engine run and they had those afterburners going in there and that thing is straining against those cables and I just felt, boy, this is really going to be something. <laughs> We had a need to know what was going on in other countries, and the way that we were going to do that was having a photographic aircraft that could fly very high and very fast. The SR-71 was that answer for the U.S. Air Force and for the United States.
suit was designed to have 100% oxygen in the nasal cavity area and then compressed air in the rest of the suit so that if you were to lose cabin pressure at 80,000 feet or above, um, the nitrogen bubbles in your system would come out and your blood would boil. So you need some kind of an environment around you. That's what the pressure suit provided. three people that do nothing but strap you into the cockpit. And unlike a lot of aircraft, this cockpit is down sort of in the bowels of the aircraft. You're, you get placed down inside the cockpit and strapped in. And then the, the canopy is lowered on top of you. You don't even lower it yourself. Someone has to do that for you and lock it down. You're kind of becoming part of the aircraft and it's becoming part of you. Where it really got impressive is when it starts taxiing out of the hangar. And it's 110 feet long, and so this thing keeps coming out, keeps coming out, keeps coming out. And all of a sudden, you realize that's an awesome looking airplane as it gradually comes out of the hangar. So here we were looking at an airplane that's going to be going 2,000 miles an hour, and its design was so futuristic. It's like no other airplane that had ever been designed because it was going to fly in an environment that no other airplane had ever been in. Tower Aspen 3-0 is number one for takeoff. I never forget how it feels to light those afterburners and feel one light before the other one does, and it jerks you pretty hard. Next thrust. And it accelerates rather rapidly. Just a matter of seconds, you're, you're hitting 180 knots indicated airspeed, lifting off at 210 making sure you get the gear retracted before it overspeeds at 300 knots. And you keep pulling that nose up to try to achieve uh, the 400 knot climb out. And in less than two minutes from brake release, you're pulling out of afterburn, you're level at 24,000 feet. So it's quite a ride. I remember the first time I took the aircraft up to speed and went to altitude, then went through Mach 1. And I approached Mach 2 and it went through Mach 2 without the slightest uh, indication of any problems and I marveled at that and then it rolled right on through Mach 3. Of course none of us had ever been that fast before but you did all of this uh, effortlessly. That was the feeling you had that you had control of so much power on this aircraft that it was almost limitless. I flew the aircraft up near the Arctic Circle, and I might actually traverse dawn to dusk and back two or three times. I've seen the sun rise and set three times on a flight, which is very unusual. <laughs> and we're actually flying faster than the Earth's rotation, so we're outrunning the sun. It is the only operational airplane in the history of the American Air Force in which no Air Force crew members are ever killed. That's a record that no other airplane has. And when you consider the environment in which it flew, the speed, the altitude, the temperatures, that's a real credit to Kelly Johnson. People love a winner. They love when someone is the best in the field. This aircraft was the best in its field. It was the prime speed machine of the world. Every speed and altitude record that it set, it holds to this day. Can't say enough about Kelly Johnson himself. He was, a, he was an absolute aeronautical genius. Working for Lockheed, uh, I, I think he's made the greatest aircraft that ever existed. There's just something about the sleek SR-71 that uh, 
makes it in the class of one. there is no other.